Glad I didn't want to wear one of those sport coats tonight. Uh, before I start my remarks, I'd like to, uh, one, com one thing that was set up here really that j really jumped out at me. Uh, Peter, when that cop was shooting the guy from four feet away, <laughs> and he, he, he unloaded his gun and missed him every time, was he a referee? And I will tell you, it's, I didn't know we were going to play the sincerity game tonight with the way he was up here going to it. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Great job, Chris. It is truly an honor for me to be here, getting inducted in the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame. And it is one of the great pleasures of my life to enter with this class that I'm entering with tonight. The honor is special to hang with these other four guys is real special to me. I, uh, I've known Ben Smith since we were in high school together. Played against him in high school, played against him in college. Coached against him when he was assistant coach at uh, Yale. And I was fortunate enough to have him come work with us at Boston University uh, for nine years. He put up with me for nine years. Uh, he was a great mentor for me, and, and I, I called him when, when I found out I got into the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame, and I told him I had to call you and tell you thank you very much because I know I'd never, this never would have happened if it wasn't for Ben because he, I, can, I can be a bit of a pain in the ass, and I was always a pain in the ass to USA Hockey people, and Ben always smoothed things over for me, and I'll be... <laughs> he did it in a lot of other phases of my life, too, but... He was pretty good with me in USA Hockey, and I'll be forever happy for that. I, uh, I think that Scotty Young might be the, the, one of the best hockey players ever to play at BU, even though he was only there for two years. And you already heard about all, all the things he's accomplished in his career since leaving BU. And I have one regret for the two years he was there. I should have played him every other shift. <laughs> I didn't know he was going to leave right out. And he was without question, he could have played every other shift. He was such a great skater, and it's already been alluded to that he could play any position as well. So shame on me and shame on you, Ben. <laughs> I think that uh, Ron Wilson might, might have been one of the greatest college players I ever coached against. He was, he, we're talking about him as a, as, a, as a fabulous coach up here, but he was an unbelievably great college hockey player. I may be mistaken, but I think he still holds the scoring record at Providence College. And he was a defenseman. And if he, he was playing in this era, he'd be playing for 20 years. He was an unbelievable player. But he also was a fabulous coach, as you've already heard. And to be associated with him, with his class, is a feather in my cap. I, uh, I also, I think it was nice that Kevin mentioned that we just met each other last night and it feels like we know each other now and, and I really believe that and I, I think that's one of the greatest things about our sport. It's, it's really parochial. We know each other, we're around each other a lot. It's a great part of the sport and uh, I'm very, very happy to be going in with Kevin, especially since he's not a referee. I had a lot of the referees come up to me and say, hey, geez, I'm, I've heard a lot about you, Jack. And I know what they heard. <laughs> uh, when I got the call from Pat Kelleher, I was really, wow, this is really something. And then I was thinking about, how the hell did I get here? I grew up in Summerville, Massachusetts as a basketball player. And that was the sport I loved, and I still love it to this day. And now I'm in the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame. And I can tell you how I got here with one word, coincidence. The first coincidence was my twin brother, Bob, who started playing hockey when we were kids. Because as a coincidence, my father had a close friend that was a friend of Fernie Flamins, and Fernie gave us a pair of hand-me-down skates. And they only fit Bob. 
and he started playing hockey on ponds. And I, my father would take him over to the Boston Skating Club, and they had public skating on Friday nights, and you could skate this way, and then you could skate that way. And I'm watching this from the screen saying, this is a lot of fun. <laughs> and then, but then Bob started playing a thing called peewee hockey. Now, there was no peewee hockey in summer. There was no peewee hockey anywhere, except in one place, Belmont the Belmont Pee Wees, and it wasn't a team, it was a league run by a, a gentleman named Scott Perot, who was, you, know, you want to talk about uh, a guy who started hockey around here. And I think, I know I've seen Kenny Perot, his son, who was a great player and teammate of Ben's here, but Scott Perot did an awful lot for hockey in this area. And Bob was playing for the Belmont Pee Wees. And now he's on a rink with sticks and gloves. And Christmas time, I'm getting skate, I'm getting a, a pair of sneakers and a basketball and he's getting hockey gloves and Gordie Howe shirts, and I think I'm getting the shot end of the stick here. <laughs> so I started going skating with him. That was in the uh, seventh grade. In the eighth grade, another coincidence, Joe Quinn, who used to be my park instructor, did I say that right, Ben, park instructor? Right, my park instructor, Joe Quinn, got the high school, junior high school coaching job at Somerville High, and he knew that Bob and I were, had, could skate. So he called us up and asked me if we would wanted to play on the Summer of High Junior, the Junior High School hockey team. Yeah, we'd love to, Joe, except there's a big problem. We don't go to Summer of Junior Highs. <laughs> we go to St. Anne's School. Oh, well, that's no problem. He says, you're in the eighth grade, you're a junior high kid, and you're in Somerville. Nobody checks IDs around here. <laughs> so we played with his brother Jimmy and with Sean, Sean Quinlan. We had a pretty good team. The very first game I ever played on was outdoors at and the Arlington guys will remember this, a lot of guys will remember this, outdoor MDC rink over by Route 2. The first time I was ever on a, a rink with board, ice with boards, and I uh, ne never put hockey socks on before, I had to have somebody show me that. And uh, we played Ringe Tech. And I, I gotta say that I was better than most of the Ringe Tech players. That's how bad the hockey was. <laughs> um, and then I got another coincidence. Bob decided to go to Malden Catholic which was a big time hockey school. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna play basketball or hockey. And I, uh, but he's my twin, I better go to school with him. He's gonna need some help. <laughs> and uh, so I went to Marlin Catholic and I would decide when I got there whether I'd play basketball or hockey. And uh, when I got there, honestly, it seemed like every kid I knew in my class were all hockey players. They were all trying out for the hockey team and they were all great guys. Uh, Dave Pollard is here tonight, a great player at Merrimack College, who's a teammate of mine at, at Marlin Catholic. In any event, I decided to stay with hockey that year. I knew I could make the varsity basketball team if I didn't make the hockey team. But lo and behold, myself and Dave Pollard and Brother Bob didn't get to play varsity freshman year, Ben. We had to play in the freshman team. You too, Dwight, I know. And, uh, but it was a lot of fun and we wound up, I was on the varsity the next year and we had a real good team. And I was into hockey now. There was no basketball in my mind anymore. I was into hockey. And then I uh, had some technical difficulties at Marlin Catholic. <laughs> and uh, I was asked to leave. <laughs> and uh, I just want to let you know, I was an A student on the varsity hockey team, but I hooked school one day. And truancy was cause for dismissal at Marlin Catholic. I hadn't read the handbook. And anyway, I was out of MC, and now another coincidence, Joe Quinn, my junior high coach, illegally, uh, just got the job at Catholic Memorial. And I went to Catholic Memorial to play with Joe, and it was a great break for me, because he was a great coach. And another thing that was a great break was Joe was a former BU hockey captain. And Joe kept kind of pushing me towards BU, and I was gonna go anybody, anybody was interested in me. And I know that Joe talked to Jack Kelly about maybe being interested in, in recruiting myself. Another coincidence, which is even more important, was that my mother's best friend, Grace Kelly, not the movie star, but Grace Kelly lived directly across the street from us, and she was Jack's cousin. And she kept telling Jack that you ought to recruit the, the Parker boys. They're, they're good hockey players. She didn't know anything about hockey. <laughs> uh, and lo and behold, Jack entered my life, and, and uh, that was one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. Uh, I got a scholarship to go to Boston University and play for, for Jack Kelly. And I got a, I, I, to this day, I think he was the best professor I ever had in college. Uh, but when I got out, I was a finance major in the business school and Jack knew a lot of contacts and he got me a job at 
friend of his was president of the Middlesex Bank, and he got me a job there. And that's what I thought I was going to be, a, a banker. Would have had to change the sport coats. <laughs> and I, I became, a, uh, and another coincidence, my line mate, great friend, classmate, Billy Riley, was going to be, of the famous Riley family, was going to be the assistant coach at Medford High School the next year because Judge Boudreau, the Medford High coach, wanted him to be there. And he, he told them that he had to leave because he was going to go down and take a job in Pennsylvania at Lehigh University. And he asked me if I would fill in for the year. And that coincidence got me to be a hockey coach. The very next year, Jack Kelly enters my life again and offers me a job as assistant coach at BU and a graduate uh, scholarship to go to graduate school. And then the following year, uh, a year after that, we won two national championships. We were very, very successful. And of course, Jack was the head coach. I was along for the ride, but I learned a lot. I was really in graduate school then with Jack. And then I, a year and a half later, I became the head coach at BU. And I stayed there 40 years. A, de a, a real dead-end job. Now, you don't stay as a hockey coach for 40 years unless you win hockey games. And we won a lot of hockey games. And the reason why we won a lot of hockey games is because we had a lot of great players. And the reason why we had a lot of great players is because we had a lot of great assistant coaches. Ben was one. And I'm really proud to have a whole bunch of my former assistants, and there's a lot of them, but a bunch of my former assistants here tonight, and I'd like to have them all stand up for me, please. They're the reasons why I was there 40 years, and I really appreciate that. I, uh, I do believe that another reason why I was successful at BU is because BU wanted to have a good hockey team. And over the years, we had great administrators, great ADs, great, great fellow coaches that coached other sports, but also great presidents that wanted BU to be good. If, you know, Walter Brown Arena was built, again, this arena was built. They always wanted to have a good hockey team, so I was fortunate to be at BU. Uh, And finally, we come to my family. I always say I had two daughters and 244 sons, which are my hockey players, but, uh, and I had a great time with those guys. They were terrific for, to me and for me. But I owe an awful lot to my two daughters, Allison and Jacqueline, uh, who put up with an absentee father all those years. Even when I was home, I wasn't home. And uh, I really appreciate you being okay with that all those years. By being the BU hockey coach, Allison met her husband. Uh, excuse me. Actually, they both did it one time. <laughs> but Alice, Jacqueline met her husband, Scott Lachance, and produced some pretty good family here. We'll get to in a second. My, uh, but everybody's alluded to it's a hard job, and you, know, you have to have support at home. And my wife, Jackie, was just absolutely terrific to me all those years. She was the sane one in the family. She was the one that tried to keep me from out acting out on my defects. Joe, she wasn't that successful, Joe Britannia, but she held, she held me in check sometimes. And she's, she's been absolutely terrific for me for all these years. Uh, and now I'm retired and I'm home all the time. And I wanna, I wanna go public here right now. As they said in The Godfather, if some unfortunate accident should happen to me, if I should fall off a cliff or get hit by a truck, I'm going to hold somebody in this, room, in this room responsible. And the first person you should look at is my wife. And finally, people ask me, how do you, how do you like retirement? And I tell them I love it because I get a chance to go watch my grandchildren play hockey. And I like to have those three guys either stand up or wave. Jake, Shane, and Ryan. It's, it's fun hanging around with them. I couldn't be more happy to be here with you guys. I can't believe all the people that I know in the room. And it just, again, proves how great hockey people are. We know each other and we hang with each other. And I hope I'm hanging with you for a long, long time. Thank you very, very much.